All right, Amber, you're back again. Um, we're going to help you find your type. Um, we just, uh, you know, um, you guys in the comments, please comment below what you think her type is visually, and uh, we'll get into this. So, uh, Amber, can you uh, introduce yourself? Okay. Um, so, my name is Amber. I'm from Italy, and uh, I'm doing a PhD in the UK right now. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, what do you want to be remembered for? Sorry? What do you want to be remembered for? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question. I said, what do you want to be remembered for? Remembered? Oh, um, uh, well, uh, I guess I I'd like to be remembered for, for what I am actually like, like, it, it's it's very hard for me to uh, allow people to know me and to express my ideas and my my views about things. So I would like to be remembered for uh, these ideas and these uh, um, thoughts. Like, hmm. you know. What What do you think is tough? What do you think is the toughest part about getting your ideas out? Um, I guess it's just the, that the, the idea is more complex than the language. So oftentimes I find it difficult to like express uh, my ideas about a topic because I I think I think that there are many aspects uh, I need to consider, and it's as they all clash together. So it's not easy to like uh, present them in a in a in an orderly logical way. So I I end up like only presenting one aspect, but I would like to express the entire uh, thing, and that is hard to do for me. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go about learning something new? Um, it depends, I guess. Um, well, usually, I I learn. Uh, about something and when there is something related I research this thing related so it's like it's not step by step but it's like uh, I guess uh, like a net of, uh, of, of things that I need to like multitask at once in, and this is the process basically it's like it's not like a neat learning from one step to the second and then move on to the third step it's like one step is a, composed of many steps and that allows me to have a broader vision of what i'm learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um what is a tough time that what what has been one of the best times in your life and why um best time of my life was probably uh when i was about 15 or 16 and i i went on holiday with my friends um yeah that i i remember that holiday as the best of my life and it wasn't like a period a, uh, an entire period of my life it was, it was actually um not a very good period because you know I was a teenager and that's not a very good period usually but that specific like two weeks were very good yeah but why oh why <laughs> um well I guess I I was able to connect to people when I was on holidays only with them and um I was away from home and I was exploring new new places, and it was summer, and there was a sea as well that counts, and yeah, it was just a good time. Where did you go? Um, Cocoa Beach. Cocoa Beach. It's, uh, Cocoa Beach is like I guess near Miami. Or so. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's Florida. Mm -hmm. for, for the entire time, for two yeah. weeks? Yes. Yeah. We were there the entire time. 
-hmm. and can you remember like you know where you went what you did is anything specific that really sticks out or mm -hmm. yeah uh, i remember we went surfing once and i asked the, the instructor if there were sharks in the sea and he said that he had he had never seen sharks and i said i'm not sure if this time you're going to see any though <laughs> and yeah that was one thing and it was so hard to stand on the surfing board and at the end my knees were all scratched and the skin like was coming off it was quite gross and then <laughs> another thing yeah another thing i remember is we went to i think some oh oh there was a as you call it, a rocket launch that were those okay. two weeks when we were there so we saw the rocket um like going out of into the the universe you know and when the rocket uh was like i don't know how to call it, but when it when it was leaving the earth there was a big a big um a big jump i mean i felt like the earth was shaking yeah was yeah, it like a like the other was it like a sonic boom or was it like uh or just like from the blast off mm, i don't know the difference well sonic boom that's like when it like when uh you go past the speed of sound there's supposed to be like a loud noise mm -hmm. oh no it wasn't a loud noise it was uh like shaking a, a deep like a deep noise and yeah shaking under my feet Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where do you think you get your values and stuff from? Um, okay. Uh, let me think. Uh, where they come from? I guess uh, mostly it's cultural. Like, uh, like some values you learn from family and from your, your country, like your, your own culture. So the environment you're grown uh, in, and um, well, I guess other just comes natural as a way of comparison. Like when I learn about different values, I know which one are the true, uh, are the good values, and yeah, that's where they come from, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um. How do you, what do you think uh, about, uh, what would be your dream job? My dream job? Yeah, I've, I've been asking my question recently, I mean, to myself recently. Um, I don't know if I have a dream job, honestly. Mm. I mean, in the past, I, I used to... I, I like the idea of becoming a writer, um, but that was long ago when I was in high school. But now I have kind of lost this passion for writing, especially because my originally I used to write in Italian and my Italian was very good. And now I haven't been using Italian for uh, many years. And my English isn't as good either. So it's kind of like a struggle, I mean, not knowing uh, the language like entirely, it's you miss out like nuances of uh, expression. So that's like, I think that's why I lost the passion for writing. Also, I'm I'm probably also lazy and yeah. You are you talking about like scholarly writing or what kind of writing exactly? Like, did you want to do? Uh, I like poetry, okay. Uh, but I I don't I don't really study the the rhymes like the the structure of poetry. I just know a few, and I I don't really like to to follow uh, structures, although that's the best way usually to to compose a poem. But uh, I also like like free writing, like writing about something. Um, how's it called? Something personal, like introspective writing, this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't like writing fiction, for example. Gotcha. Yeah, poetry is it's definitely it's a difficult one if you don't you know if you don't like have a good grasp on the language you know it's a yeah mm -hmm. yeah um okay um what was the most challenging part of your life and why uh tough question <laughs> well i i i'd say early uh teenagerhood like from from 14, 13 to like 16. That was the toughest period. Um, I, I, I had struggles uh, with my family and I, I also changed a couple of schools because um, I wasn't doing well at school. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think about uh, authority um, or like um, bosses at jobs? Like, what, how do you deal with that? Um, well, I I respect the authority um, usually, like. When when the authority is fair, I do respect the authority. Um, although I find it hard to like to work under the supervision of someone, because um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel good to be like a, um, how do you call when you play chess and there's a small thing. Pawn, like, yeah, I guess the pawn. The pawn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, has there been ever a time where you had to talk to like challenge authority and thing like that? Um. Yeah, I I did challenge the authority when I was a teenager, and by authority I meant my teachers in high school, who were quite well authoritative indeed like no matter uh what they what they said was good or wrong you had to just follow and i i kind of rebelled against that when i didn't feel it was fair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so how, how do you know something's fair or not um <clears throat> How do I know if it's fair? Um, well, it just feels fair or not. Like, uh, I guess I, I don't know how to answer this question. It just feels fair or not. Mm -hmm. And how'd you go about telling them? Now or by then? Back then. Like back then. Uh, well, back then, uh, in a passive aggressive way, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Passive aggressive? Yeah. What do you mean, passive aggressive? Like, <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know. For example, if I was holding a book, maybe I would just throw it on a table and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, or maybe, yeah. Anyway, can you give me, can you give an example of like uh, what wasn't fair? Can you think of anything? Um. Mm, um. Well, uh, I think once uh, I. We, we had a way of testing in, in Italy where basically teachers uh, call you like on the day they if they feel like calling someone they call this person and ask questions and then give a grade and I was like called two days in a row because the first day I didn't do well and I thought I mean usually when you're 
when you're tested, you don't need to prepare the second day and you're just going to be tested maybe two weeks later. And this teacher was, uh, I mean, she tested me two days in a row, which was unfair. So when I had to give her my, my booklet to record all the grades, I basically smashed it on the desk in front of her and she took it very badly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what is something you have... that you're trying to work on as a person? Right now? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to work on and maybe improving myself, like improving my perception of things. Like I care a lot about what people think and this prevents me from uh, from basically being myself. So this is the 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 thing I want to overcome, like to to be able not to give too much uh too much thought to what people would uh, think of me if I'm just being my authentic self mm -hmm. so that I can be myself. Now, are, are you talking about specific people, people in general? And like, can you give an example of like, like how you're afraid of people judging you? Um, it's many, many situations like uh, online for one. Mm -hmm. Like if someone asks a question and if my if I feel that my answer is probably not going to be well received by the community, I probably don't answer. Or if I mm -hmm. do answer, I I am anxious every time I open the comments. I, I think someone is going to attack me or stuff like that. And or in real life, like if I if I go to a place and maybe I need to communicate with the, um, uh, I don't know, let's say in a shop, I have to communicate with the clerk. Um, I'm afraid of um, not being polite enough. Like I'm afraid mm -hmm. of asking things to, in a direct way. So I probably, um, I'm very tentative when I demand things from people. And I think that is because I'm afraid they will judge me as road if I'm too direct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, have you had an experience like online where you make a comment and then people start attacking you? Or I'm just wondering if this is like this worry is based on experience or it's just uh, like an anxiety that you have? Um, I guess um, it's based, uh, maybe I have some experience. But uh, more mostly, it's like it's just anxiety. I think. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's kind of like the picture I'm getting. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't think that happens too often. Like usually, yeah, I think usually you're very you're very polite about how you word things. So. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what's something? What's a skill you think everybody should learn? Um. I guess to be empathetic, that <laughs> would be a good thing. <laughs> Why yeah. empathy? Um, well, because uh, I'm just connecting to the previous question of, on what blocks me from, from expressing myself. It's because I am afraid when people are not empathetic, so they, they don't take into consideration how their words will affect uh, others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's a good skill to be like diplomatic in a way. Um, if you could have, uh, if you if you had three, three wishes, what would you wish for? Three wishes. Yeah, it could be absolutely um, anything. Okay, well, one wish would be to to know everything I know now, but much earlier, like many, many years ago, maybe even as a child, so I could tell people around me about stuff. And yeah, that would be the first wish. The second wish would be 
to be able to breathe underwater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's random, but I don't know. I think, I think it's kind of nice if you're able to, to breathe underwater and just dive and stay there for a long time and not hear or see anyone. Um, third wish would be, well, based on now, it would be that my, uh, what I plan, my vision for my daughter's future can be, can come to reality. So yeah, those are the three wishes. And, and what's, what's the vision for your daughter's future? Um, well, to have a, a fulfilling life under all aspects. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Um, what do you, do you like, like if you were given a scenario, do you like to um, make the choices or give people the choices? I'm not good at making choices. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't like when people ask me to choose even about what to eat, for example, it just gives me stress. Uh, so I, I prefer to give people choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you were on a team, what role would you pl uh, play and why? Mm. I mean, what kind of thing, like in a work setting? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I will just uh, do what, what I'm told to. Like, uh, if I'm given a, a task, I will just work towards the task. Um. What are three words that um, people would use to describe you? Mm, so one word that's been used to describe me is that I remember now. It's soft, like mm -hmm. soft-spoken mm -hmm. and shy. Okay. And two are enough. Or uh, well, yeah, if you if you could think of a third one, that would that would be good. Mm. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nice. How do you deal with people who take advantage of you being nice? Um. Well, I stop being nice. I guess. Um. Like I stop being helpful if if I'm helping them, but they take advantage of me. I just stop helping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so how do you handle your laziness? How do you combat that? You said you said I, what's your strategy? Yeah, I mean I don't have a strategy as of now. <laughs> uh it's it's a bit a bad period uh, in relation to that indeed. Like I have been very lazy in the past few months and I I just wait for the for for the like the energy the mental energy to come back. So at the moment I'm not having a strategy to overcome the laziness. Yeah. Um, well, we do know your enneagram. We, we know that for sure. Okay, we know that. So what what enneagram do you generally get? Four. Okay, that's yeah. wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, your enneagram nine actually. Nine? Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Um, <laughs> Why? Because you sin, it keeps going back to lazy. So like, if you could find someone sin, you can always figure out like what the enneagram is. So a nine would have envy, uh, mm. or suffering. They would talk about that. Um, as in you don't talk about that, you talk about like being lazy and, and how you overcome your laziness. Um, and laziness is tagged uh -huh. uh, Instagram nine. So really, but all the tests I did online showed four. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, people just yeah. like we we've noticed with ENTPs, um, 
they get Enneagram 7, but they're actually Enneagram 4. Really? ENTPs? Mm -hmm. I cannot figure it out. <laughs> because they're always talking about suffering and envy. If you, if you ever hear them, they're always talking about suffering or envy. Like, yeah. Because somebody else has something and they kind of want it. Or like uh, they'll talk about like how they suffered through something and how suffering gives them strength. Mm -hmm. That's Enneagram 4. But yeah, I also do that. Yeah, but your yours is more. You're not really talking about envying anyone else's life or envying like what other people have that mm -hmm. you have, or the lack of not having something inside of yourself. It's more. I mean, a, where where do I not do that? Like here now with you. Yeah, you're not really talking about that. You're going. You're harping back on the Enneagram Nine, which is lazy. Like it's. Yeah, but I I think that that's the a problem of uh like being familiar mm -hmm. like it, with someone close to me I, I think I would be more open about expressing feelings mm -hmm. and suffering is a feeling like, right envy is also a feeling mm -hmm. so I think I don't know I I think you cannot determine that uh based on this interaction mm, no you, you you can pretty much you can find it because like let's say if we had an ETP on here they would be talking about suffering. Mm. They would be like going back to it and how like suffering, that's the way of life, you know? Um, if you hear like- CSI, You mean they would accept suffering? Is that what you mean? They they really like harping back on suffering. Um, like let's say if you, I don't know if you know who Andrew Tate is. You know who Andrew Tate is, no. Uh, I've heard of him. Well, he, he always like kind of like weaponizes his suffering for strength. Um, mm. as in like the, or David Goggins, or David, you know David Goggins is like the military guy, motivational the, speaker, motivational speaker. Um, no, he's all. But basically, what he does is he's like a suffering junkie. Like he figures out, <laughs> he, he figures out ways to weaponize suffering to make himself stronger. That's why he's always like challenging himself. Um, and he's kind of been doing that in his entire life. That's why he became uh a Navy SEAL or whatnot. He's just he's just mm -hmm. using the suffering for strength. Like um, we just had Malcolm on here, and he says once he starts feeling those emotions, he has to do something with that energy. So he's mm -hmm. like channeling that that into like power, as opposed to Enneagram Nine is a lot different. <laughs> they really struggle with <laughs> with being lazy. Like they really struggle with being lazy. Okay. I mean, at the end, I mean, I can, I'll read a passage for you at the end and, and you can tell me if it aligns with you or not. Um, mm -hmm. we get most likely SP Enneagram nine. So that means self-preserving um, nine. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, we've noticed that certain um, personality types belong to certain Enneagrams. Um, okay. And um, the only one we've seen from an INFP that was a four was Michael Jackson. Mm. And he openly did he talk about suffering. Yeah, he talked he openly talks about envying like children because he didn't have a childhood. Like if mm -hmm. you watch like an interview with Michael Jackson, he'll talk about like envying other kids and like because they got to have an actual childhood and he didn't. And that's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And now how he kind of used that to build um let's say like the Neverland Ranch, or whatever. So he kind of like channeled that into positivity. But he still mm -hmm. envied those kids who got a childhood, even though he was a mega celebrity. He still envied what he didn't have inside of himself. See what I'm saying? Yeah, but I also envy people who have what I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. So um, well, what do you think you envy? Um, well, the most uh, straightforward straightforward answer would be people who are happy um, people who can live by the day and just um, not care about uh, like problems so much like not overthink everything so I envy people who are like carefree and mm. who are good at social interaction, for example. Mm -hmm. Like I I really hate when I'm in a group and I try to speak 
but I'm other people speak um, like on me like um, they like overcome my voice like it's they, as if they, my voice is yeah I'm, I'm, I don't want to inter interrupt but basically people speaking over you basically right yeah you, yes yeah. I, I hate that and I think that is because I of poor people's skills for me like I I'm not able to uh, to to gather people's attention maybe my tone of voice is too low or maybe I look not engage with what I'm saying, like mm -hmm. I'm too detached when I'm speaking and people have a tendency to not wait, like until the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do you, in your, in your childhood, do you believe like, do you think like you didn't have time to like actually talk up or you didn't get the, the ability to voice your own opinion? Um, in childhood? Mm -hmm. um, no, no, because my mom never listened to what I had to say. She was, she she has a very, like, extroverted personality. She's very enthusiastic, and she anticipates what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. And so that also she she's very she has like filters like. If you are trying to say something that reflects your emotions and maybe that is what she considers weak emotions, she's going to stop you and like redirect what you're saying into something with a positive um, view instead, like more optimistic. So that's the way I was never able to like express myself. So you, you feel as though like she kind of made all the choices for you? Um, yeah, I don't know about what choices. Like, and just, you know, um, do you think she made choices for your life for you or you feel like you made the choices? No, she didn't make any choice for my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, not directly at least. Um, but my dad did make the choices. Mm -hmm. he, he chose everything from school to um what to study mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to study psychology and he 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 persuaded not me not to because it wouldn't be useful to find a job according to him mm -hmm. and yeah same in high school when I when I failed the classical studies high school I I didn't want to change school like I I don't know how it's called like I was fluent one year mm -hmm. and I didn't want to change the school but they my parents forced me to change mm -hmm. because yeah that's a very bad teaching actually because if you fail at something it would be better to encourage you to like keep going mm -hmm. and make it the second time instead mm -hmm. the, the teaching they gave me is that if you fail then try something else you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um what do you see yourself in the next 10 10 years um next 10 years mm -hmm. i think i'll be in different places mm -hmm. like like if i continue if I continue what I'm doing now, I, I might be um, working in different countries. And I, I just, I'm not sure right now if I want to continue what I'm doing or if I want to like find another route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you know if, some, if it's something that you want in your life? Um, Something that I want. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, when it makes me feel fulfilled, I guess, when it, when I feel it's uh, authentic to my personality, mm -hmm. it's probably something I want. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. Um, 
what are like some of the most important lessons you've learned in life? Mm. Well, not to allow people to choose for me. That would have uh, spared a lot of a lot of suffering and a lot of regret afterwards. Mm -hmm. And and not to be too impulsive either. Like, mm, yeah, just not to react based on how I feel. Do you feel as though you react mm -hmm. how you feel a lot? Or like, how, how do you go about that? Well, I'm thinking about uh, when I was a teenager, where, like I made an example before uh, when I I smashed the, the book on the, my teacher's desk. And that's a, 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 feel, a, a reaction based on, feel, on feelings. Mm -hmm. So I would do that differently if I could go back. And what, what do you think led you to just smash the, 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 the book on it? Why, why not just like force your opinion? Uh, because I, I don't know. I was afraid of, of voicing my opinion. I mean, I knew she wouldn't understand anyway, and she would, she would insist on her ways. So I didn't even try to to confront her. Okay. Um... And, and I'm just wondering, going back to what you were saying about, uh, you're not sure if you want to keep keep going on the path that you're on. Um, so other than like you just basically just it sounds like your your heart's really not any and is your heart's not any, any anymore right i think that's what you're saying sorry uh, can you repeat the question i'm sorry like so um all right because you said you don't know if you're going to keep going on the the, per the current path that you're on and that you might want to do something else so like wh why why exactly mm -hmm. is that uh <laughs> oh well <laughs> Why is that? Um, well, because of the things I've been learning uh, recently that made me question my choices and why I do what I do. Gotcha. Um, and also because I think it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's something I can do well right now, but it stresses me out a lot. Like it feels almost toxic because I probably mm -hmm. don't do it for the right reason. Like there's mm -hmm. no real motivation. Um, I mean, it's um, a means to an end, but it's not the, it's not a meaningful end, I guess. Mm -hmm. So what, what else uh, appeals to you? Like if you're gonna do something else, do you, do you have any ideas? No. Um, <laughs> well, I I tried like I I have I've already tried uh, the the off office job office kind of jobs, mm -hmm. but um, that's kind of boring because I don't like to um, well unless probably they changed their their like working routines because after COVID maybe they're more flexible they do some like partly work from home, partly go to office, that would mm -hmm. probably be ideal. Um, but if it's office like every day, Monday to Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I, I wouldn't do that. And what, why, why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, because it's a waste of time. <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, I know I'm working for someone else and I, it's bad for yeah. my health to just sit on a desk for so many hours. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what do you think leads to your anger? Anger. Mm -hmm. mm, not being listened for one. Um, and also when people don't change, I I get really angry. Well it's I think it's related to not being listened to. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a quote that, that best describes you? 
a quote? Yeah. Or do you have any favorite quotes? Hmm. Yes, I just don't know it by heart. I need to Google it. Um, there was a quote by Shakespeare, which said that when we are babies, we cry because we came to um, a place of fools. Now I don't remember the exact the, the exact like wording, but yeah, if you Google that, uh, that's the meaning. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know it's it's not uh, the real reason why babies cry, but it's I like the the metaphor. Okay, I'll see if I can pull that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. What do you think is the best part about typology, and what do you think is the worst part? Um, the best part is that it's interesting like everything anything that is related to psychology i find very interesting because i find it interesting to understand uh, how the human mind works and all the complexities related to it and the worst part is um well despite having all this knowledge it's uh, somewhat uh, not practical. Like you cannot really, I mean, it's very hard to have a, a meaningful impact with this knowledge. Like it's just understanding what it is, but it's as if you don't have the power to change what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hmm, mm -hmm. um, if there's, if if there's if you could have anything, um, what like what what would you want to have? Something that you don't have right now. Um. Um. Well, <laughs> probably a. I don't know. I mean, does it have to be something? Physical or something like a quality? No, it, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be physical. Then, okay, it's not physical. Then I'd like to have the ability to be stoic, to not feel an emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I, I found that quote, by the way. I think it's uh, when, when we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. What does mm -hmm. that mean? What does that mean to I'm you? I'm sorry? What does that mean yeah. to you? Well, it's the truth that everyone <laughs> is uh, a fool <laughs> and and everyone suffers. And <laughs> what do you mean by that face? Listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he doesn't, he, I don't think he likes talking about suffering, but uh, it's <laughs> to, to me, it's like, well, we when, when we're born, we all cry, and like so, what Shakespeare's saying is that we cry when we come to this great stage of fools. It's like we're all actors on a stage; um, we're all mm -hmm. fools. Um, I think there's probably a lot that you could unpack with that. Um, <laughs> You're just like, oh, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no action there, um, but yeah, um, man, um, I think we've been. This is this is tough. This is a tough one. Um, um, Tom, what are you thinking, man? Uh, uh well, have you uh any have you done any anything interesting or gone any, any place interesting lately? Um, uh, sorry, what's the question? Like, have you gone anywhere recently or done anything very interesting? Like, had any kind of interesting experiences? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Uh, I, I went, in fact, to visit Shakespeare's birthplace. That's why I thought about this quote. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And mm. when, when was that and what happened? Last week, uh, I went with a friend and uh, we just visited the, the house. 
um, um, well, she's not, um, she, she's Asian, so she doesn't really have the, the cultural background in Western like uh, literature. So we didn't mm -hmm. really have a discussion about that. But um, yeah, it was very nice um, to just see that uh, it was so different from what I thought. Because I, I didn't know uh, Shakespeare's background and he was actually quite rich. And he, his home was so nice and big and with a wonderful view. And, and I saw the, the fireplace. By, um, he was born on the floor by, by the fireplace. And it was just uh, so nice to see uh, like a place where such an important person was born. And that's in uh, Stratford upon Avon, or where is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that's the place. Mm -hmm. And how far is that from uh, from where you are? Uh, I think it's about an hour by train. Oh, that's not bad at all. No, we're I basically I'm in the middle of the UK, which is like close to all the touristic locations. Mm -hmm. And you're still uh, you're still in Scotland or no? No, no, I'm in Warwick. Oh, so, oh, so that's in England then? Yes, I did my master's in Edinburgh, but my PhD is in Warwick. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you like it there or no? No, uh, not particularly. I, I no. prefer Scotland. Yeah, yeah. I, rem I remember. Yeah, you, you really like the Edinburgh. You talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Man. So we were down. I think we're just down in like two types here, and we just wanted to be very thorough with the last two. Um. Because you know, one is one, the other one's the other one. Okay. Um. Mm. Is one close to the one last time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Um that that's what we're down to. We just want to make sure that like uh shadowed out like we are seeing what we're seeing here. Um mm -hmm. mm, mm, <clears throat> what was mm, what was a time in your life you over, overcame something and, and how did you go about doing that? Um, um, that that's a very personal question. <laughs> what, um, yeah, yeah. Shit. Um, well, you don't have to go into that. Um, yeah, because uh, you are responding, so you ain't going to go into that and you don't need to. Um. Mm. Thomas, you got anything here? I'm kind of drawing blank, man. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. Um, can you say uh, what your greatest fear is? My greatest fear. Yeah. Um. Um, I guess my greatest fear is to regret, like to okay. to regret my choices, mm -hmm. and waste, uh, waste basically my life regretting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially when I'm about to die, I don't want to regret. It. Mm -hmm. But because you feel like you're indecisive. Indecisive. Yeah, do you feel like you're an indecisive person? Um, well, I am quite indecisive because I I I take too much time to to think and compare things. Mm -hmm. And when I make a choice, I'm very aware that all the other choices have their advantages and disadvantages, basically. And 
I always hope, I mean, you can, you can never make a, a perfect choice. Like you can make a good choice, but then the rest is about luck and yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm ready. Tom, you ready? Yeah, I think we can call it. Yeah, we're yeah, just trying uh, to be uh, trying to be certain. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, we're back down to INFP again. Um, just like that last response you just said was pretty much. I'm aware of all the choices. Um, and that's the reason why I take my time with the choices. Mm -hmm. um, and no matter what, there's going to be ups and downs to those choices. So you are aware of the consequences of your choices. Um, and you are indecisive, um, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're big on TFI. You know what you love. You know what you care about. Obviously, we we, we had that. Um, you're obviously interested. You don't really like structures or systems. You talked about that. So you're anti-structures and systems. So that would make you interest. Um, so TFI, and you're responding. It's clear as day that you're responding. So being interest, responding, mm -hmm. TFI, that leaves you down to two types. That's ISFP and INFP. And, I mean, your affiliate is, I mean, I just, I didn't want to even go that route to just to finish it off. Um, I wanted to go, like, any route just to make sure. But you are very affiliate. Um, mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. pretty much make all your decisions. Um, you talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you let him make all your decisions, pretty much. Um, even like your constant. I mean, even as an adult, you let him make that decision for what you do for school. You know, he told you you want to do psychology. You wanted to do psychology, but you mm -hmm. you cared about more what or what what he wanted more than he, his he obligated you to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, INFP. And INFPs generally tend to be Enneagram nine. Mm -hmm. Generally grow up in really? families. Yes. They they tend to generally grow up in families where their voice isn't heard. And I'm gonna read while I was over here looking, I had to make sure I could find it. it Since nines often a report they grew up in a family in which their opinions wasn't heard and which others were more forceful in expressing their opinions or were, were the best strategy to feeling calm and avoiding upset was to go along with what others wanted. Through this experience of being overlooked or overpowered, I now learned to specialize in being someone who is easygoing and accommodating of others, but who, but who, when asked for an opinion, doesn't know what he wants and finds it easier to let others decide. Yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> <sighs> and then it says another thing is according to Wagner to support the passion of psycho psychological laziness, nines hold the following core beliefs as organizing psychological principles. I don't matter. It's easier that way. What I think and feel isn't important and that's okay. Other people just feel more strongly about things than I do. It's not okay to be angry or upset because that puts you at odds with others. It is important to be nice and peaceful than to be mm -hmm. true to myself. Um, it's not good to show anger because conflict destroys positive connections with others. If I'm not present and accessible to others, I'm safe. I don't know what I want and it's not that important anyway. I'm capable of knowing what I want, what I want, knowing what I want and asserting my desires in the world of others takes too much work and will alienate people I need or want to stay connected to. It's easier to go along with what other people want than to go through the trouble of asserting what I want. Hmm. Yeah. It says Nas believe that it's always best to avoid open conflict, and in so many situations, will think, "Why rock the boat?" That they can't see any reason to disrupt things on their account. Given these core beliefs, it seems natural for them to take the path of least resistance, give and give others what they want, so they can stay comfortable and undisturbed. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Um. Hmm. Amber, what do you think? Yeah, I, are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you think okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can relate to some of them. Um I'm just not sure about the not knowing what one what I want part. Mm -hmm. Um like I 
I do know some things I'm very stubborn about and I work on every day mm. uh, on these things. And that is my, I have this big vision um, for my future, but mostly for my daughter's future. That's why I mentioned before that I, I would like, like one of my three wishes is to, for my, uh, my efforts to, to bring fruits, like to, uh, to, to be useful. Um, so I, I am quite uh, aware of this thing I want. Mm -hmm. So mm. what do you want? Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, I want her to have a different life from what I have, what I had, mm -hmm. and different in all respects, and. Mm, I'm working uh, towards giving her uh, like the, sorry, I know you're, you're getting annoyed because I'm taking too no. much time. No, 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 no. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just, not annoyed. We're not annoyed. <laughs> thinking to myself, like yeah. everything you just said has nothing to do with what you want. It's kind of like mm -hmm. other person related. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I had to say, what do you want? Like, what is what you desire? Not what you desire for your, your daughter, but what do you desire? Mm. To be confident. Right. <laughs> be confident. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious. Like, when, when he asked, when he asked you that question, what you want, like, what, what's going on internally? Is it like you just like you don't know, or is it like you're not you're not sure, or like? Mm. No, it's like I'm afraid of uh, saying it out too directly. Um, <laughs> I it, it's if I say what I want, it's going to be a, a huge informative uh, session and. I, I cannot give a straightforward answer. I would have to explain why do I want this? Uh, what is my past? Um, why is it important? And okay. what am I doing towards that? So, yeah. Well, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> you, you can be really, you can be informative. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess just if the thing is, if, if you weren't, like if you were an ISFP, because I think you were considering that, like if you, I think you ask an ISFP, like what they want, I think they'll, at least in the moment, they'll have a good idea. Like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. It wouldn't be like, uh, I don't, they wouldn't have like a ton of difficulty answering the question. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, you know, between this session and the last session, I think it's, it's, it's very clear that it's kind of like, it's difficult for you to answer that. It's not like a simple answer for you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. We're rolled to the same thing. I ain't it. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. No, I'm, okay. And I'm not <laughs> not sure why I'm not sure why someone would say that you're, you know, you're yeah. an SC user. But uh, yeah, I think in, in terms of the way that you recount experiences, you recount experiences from from your SI per, your first person perspective, basically. Um. Mm -hmm. I think I think at, at the the difficulty I think was kind of getting you to talk about your experiences because I think may, maybe you're not so comfortable talking about it like in this setting, uh, like maybe mm -hmm. with people who are like you know your close friends you feel more comfortable doing that, um, but I think if you know actually getting you to talk about your experiences it's it's clear that it's coming from your own perspective, um, whereas like if I was talking about my experiences it's like uh, I'm using the environment and, and other people a lot in order to communicate like what I went through. And like, I'd be like, oh, well, this mm -hmm. person and that person and that person were there. It's like, you know, I, I need like totems or physical objects or people to remember things I've been through. Um, okay. Yeah, makes so. sense. Yeah, I mean. So yeah, I mean, I think we 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 tried to, you know, see if any other type fit, but no, I, I just, I don't see anything else. Um, I think pr prior to mm -hmm. typing you, we were considering, okay, well maybe, Maybe she's INFJ. Let's let's take a look. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's just it's not there, you know. Yeah, can't force. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you're 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 so. Inf- I mean, probably the most noticeable thing is how informative you are. And you know, people say people say you're you're nice. You're nice. You're polite. You're soft spoken. Um, yeah, that's falls like you know that falls more into the INFP territory, I think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you're and you're like oh, and another thing is just going by functions is like uh, I you know if you were an INFJ, INFP, they have TI child, and the thing about TI child is like uh, TI child can have a have a problem where like they just like they they'll just say things and because you're you're worried about people judging you they're not really worried about it because they have they have te trickster and they have ti child so they'll just like say things that like might come across offensive um and, but they're like mm-hmm. oblivious to it because they have the, they have te trickster um or like they'll just they'll just like whereas you probably did you dislike hierarchy they're kind of like blind to hierarchy um, but I think I don't think you're blind to it. I think you're very aware of it. You probably just don't like it. I, I think you talked about that last time. You don't like hierarchy. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I think it's yeah. I don't think there's there's uh, there's not at least, at least for me for, for for me and Marissa. I don't think there's any doubt about where your type is. Yeah. And, uh, okay. And uh, I I think something about uh you know I, you think you're type four. Like uh, maybe I'll send you over some some information about type nine. But I think the thing about type four is that any I think anybody who's feeling like kind of like down or depressed, you're gonna identify with type four. Like I'm I'm a type five, but if I'm feeling down and depressed, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel deficient. I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna compare myself to others and feel like I don't measure up. And I'm and you know I'm gonna feel like I don't belong and like there's something wrong with me. Like all, all those all mm-hmm. those things that are like characteristics of type four, I'm gonna identify with them. But I'm still I'm still a five. Um, so I, I think, you know, I think that you're probably more like you are a nine, but you, at times you probably feel like you identify with four a lot. Um, and, but I think, you know, you being a nine, a mediator, that probably makes more sense. And also, you know, the things that Mercer read out as far as you like feeling like, you know, your, your opinion wasn't valued as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that probably fits. Whereas like, I think type fours, type fours very often, they don't have a childhood and like they, they, they can go in one of three directions. It's like, um, they can go the, the self-preservation route which is like the David Goggins or like um, the, the type that just like learns that I, I have to endure things like no one's going to come to save me. You have the, the social, the social four, which is like, these are people who are very out in the open with their suffering. Like these are the people who are making posts on their Facebook or they're mm-hmm. telling everybody like, Oh, I, I'm going through this. Like I'm, I had, you know, I had this bad relationship and like the, you know, I'm going through all these things and I'm suffering so badly and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. The laundry so much like the, you, you know, the saying air out laundry. You know yeah, you know what? Um, like, you know what they're not laundry means it's kind of like you put all your business on the front page so everybody can be like, Oh my god, I hope you're okay. Um, man, you're really suffering over there. Uh, we should help mm-hmm. you. You know, that's what social force do. And and um, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do either, you don't do either one of them. Uh, you're, you know, I don't yeah. think you do either one of them. And then the the sexual four is usually the sexual four is like they're they're like very unhealthy because it's not bad enough that they suffer they have to make other, other people, people suffer. It's like oh, I, I'm suffer. I'm suffering so in, in order to kind of like displace their own suffering they make other people suffer which I that's I don't think that's you at all. So, um, yeah. it's like the Joker. You you know who the Joker is the Joker. Yeah. Batman. He wants everybody yeah, to yeah. suffer because he's suffered. Mm. He's a sexual sexual four. He wants everybody else to suffer just as bad as he suffered in his life. And now he's he's mm-hmm. weaponizing it to hurt people. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm I'm like that, but I can understand why he would want that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, he yeah. just had a tough life. So, you know, he's like, fuck people. They're, they're going to get the same shit that I got. You know. <laughs> That's why whenever he gets Batman, he just wants to make Batman suffer. He just wants to, like, take things away from Batman. He doesn't want to kill Batman. He just wants Batman to suffer. Like, that's his mm-hmm. whole problem. He just wants Batman to suffer like he is suffered. Yeah. That's fascinating, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what about nine? Like, what are the different types of nine? So it would be the same. It would be like self-reserving. Um, then the mm-hmm. social nine. The social nine goes against it. Those are like the nines. Mm-hmm the INFPs that or whatever that are out and they're moving, they're doing things. Um, one of the people that I can think of is like Leon. He's in our group. He's like the uh the Asian guy. Um he posts his therapies sessions and stuff like that. Uh, he has his own YouTube. Like he's outside like holding signs like 
come do speed dating with me. Like he's always on the move. So he's kind of like mm -hmm. counting it. But even he says like, you know, I kind of want to go back to like, there's a part of me that wants to be lazy, <laughs> you know, but he's mm -hmm. in the sin of lazy, um, which would be the social nine. And then there is the sexual nine, which is, does like fusion. So what they do is they like, they fuse onto like a community or a person and they take on those values. Mm. So they can kind of be forish, kind of like the the nine that comes off very forish. They can have like depression. Foolish. Four, fourish. Four, like a like a four. Like an Enneagram four. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I heard foolish, not fourish. No, no, no. So they uh. they can they can like come off very like Enneagram four ish. Um, uh -huh. They 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 fuse yeah. to like someone like let's say for instance, if I had an INFP and like they would take on my identity. And then everything that like you know matters to me would matter to them, like they like mm -hmm. lose their own identity, so they're like mm -hmm. onto me, and that would be I the see. Thing. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anything you want to ask us? No, I'm just happy that I'm confirmed INFP because I was <laughs> so <laughs> I I was so like destabilized by that comment. Um, mm -hmm. like yeah it was like my everything I built crashed <laughs> um, well, yeah mean, I mean I'm just happy that it's like it is I think you know it just I just me personally I just I'm a person that doesn't like to be in toxic environments I, I don't think it yields proper fruit or good fruits long term Um, I, mm -hmm. I don't like to be in toxic places because it'll contaminate your mind and, um, you know, some of that darkness will, will spread to you. Um, so you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that uh, on all MBTI groups, including the Facebook one, I, I feel so much toxicity coming from that group and from the Discord. So, I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm struggling between these two forces, like one that attracts me and one that repels me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it was nice. We'll see you in the group. It was a pleasure. Yeah. A Thank day. you so much. Yeah. Yep. Bye bye. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye.